Creativity, observation, and imagination are three things that you need when you are talking about things like math and science. But schools don't present it that way. Schools present it so you need one thing, memorization. You, uh, what happens is you t- um, the, the school teaches you these equations without any context, then you memorize them, and then you forget them five minutes after you receive your test score and you fi- find out it was an F. So the thing is, that is just not how we want things to work in math and science. We cannot have it just a field of memorization because that is not the case. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It is not sticking to the same old principles and rules but rather the pursuit of knowledge, trying to discover something new, and in fact, trying to amend our old rules if we find a mistake in them. And that is what our schools should be teaching. I find that the pursuit of knowledge is much more fun than somebody just telling the lesson plan to your face. Uh, It's still not tell. We use it all the time in writing, but why don't we use it in math and science at all? I think that that's a very important thing, to let your students discover, to let your students be creative. And in fact, maybe they will discover something new if they uh, experiment long enough. So, this kind of thing is what we need. We don't, uh, we don't need schools to be places where they just tell you the lesson plan to your face. That's about as effective as giving your students the uh, folder for the lesson plan and just asking them to flip through it. Uh, you, what you want to do is you want to give the students an experience with creativity, imagination, and you want to give them the freedom to do whatever they want and uh, to do something that leads up to the lesson plan, the main central lesson. You want them to discover the lesson, not to just have the lesson told them to their face. And that is the idea, the essence of imagination, of creativity. And that is what we need to teach in our schools. We need to teach math and science as that. Now, I think that that is extremely important. But we also must teach another central, pivotal thing in our schools. The art, the idea, the, the, uh, of the central idea of empathy, of love, of things like that. We must have love for one another and we must recognize uh, each other as humans. When we recognize each other as equal humans, there will be no such thing as monsters. There will be no such thing as uh, people killing others for their own beliefs, for their own religion. And unfortunately, in my religion, uh, Islam, there are also many terrorist groups emerging. Uh, and, uh, these gru- uh, and these groups have uh, recently been ravaging the world and killing many others for their own gain or because those others didn't have the same beliefs, the same ideas as them. But we must learn to recognize one another and realize that others have different beliefs, different ideas. And when we embrace that side of ourselves, when we embrace that we are all different, that we are all unique and we have different unique ideas, that is the art of empathy. Uh, Both empathy and sympathy. You must understand others from either your own perspective or their perspective. That is very important. You, uh, you must understand what others are thinking, what others are feeling. Or you must understand others' beliefs. And uh, only then will we get a world without terrorism. A world where people think of another having a, a different belief is something so criminal that you have to kill them or shoot them in the head for it. And so I think that that is a very important principle, having empathy for one another. But unfortunately, we just don't teach that in schools. In our schools, we forget to teach empathy and peace. We forget to teach people and encourage the peace between uh, all uh, others. And we forget to at least uh, say religion or the vision of belief should not mean that you're going to kill each other or duel or shoot each other just because you have different beliefs. You, uh, in schools, they must teach empathy. They must educate us about empathy. And so, I think that that is an extremely important thing that we just don't get in education. And that is why we have war, we have brutality, and we have terrorism. Because we do not teach empathy for one another.
another, and we do not teach love for one another. And uh, you might say, what about resource wars? People just uh, engage in war to get resources sometimes. Well, with enough technological advancement, resources will be in abundance. So there will be no need for war such as that. And so we uh, don't need war. We must leave war behind. And in particular, I uh, am very, uh, and I am very touched, and I uh, uh, admire the way that Nelson Mandela brought peace to South Africa, and uh, and the ANC in general brought peace, not by, by guns or bombs or weapons, but by uh, using peace negotiation and uh, being peaceful, protesting, not killing one another because they think either that the whites are bad or that they should be uh, elevated above the whites. In fact, they did not fight to get uh, for black supremacy. They fought for equality. They fought not for racism, but for equality. Just because a, a tip of the scales doesn't mean anything good. Only equality on the scales, equity, is good. We must uh, recognize each other as equal humans. Nobody is above us as humans. And just because we have different beliefs doesn't mean we are elevated above or below one another. We are all equal as humans, and we must teach that in our schools, in our education, we must teach that to our youth. Otherwise, we will have war raging on for who knows how long. And it has already been raging for the past uh, hundreds of thousands of years, ever since 10,000 BC, when the first real uh, parts of civilization were born. So I think that this is something very important. We must teach our students to imagine.